Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Facebook family. My name is Luke Ballantyne. I'm coming to you from Moment to Remember Studios here in Sunrise, Florida. Welcome to Bar Talk. I'm especially grateful for being online with our family from Jamaicans.com. This is Bar Talk, Good evening, ladies and, gentlemen. Good evening. and this is normally designed to have some guys up here. We talk about issues pertaining to men and, and have the ladies in our studio audience to kind of uh, give us a fact check and sometime to uh, give us a reality check. And actually last week we had announced that we would have been doing um, men's health and prostate in, uh, in particular. But actually um, we had to change events. As we all know, the um, coronavirus is seemingly the hot topic of the day. And as a result, we felt the, the need to kind of have our input, but an input on a totally different level. We wanted to look at it from the point of view of the, the ground root, the, 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 I would call it the grassroots level. Uh, we have talked a lot about it regarding people from the medical, from the physician's level, from the government level, from the politician's level. But I wanted to actually to, to, to go out and talk to the average man on the street. And it was a good thing I did that because guess what? Um, based on all the regulations that were put into place this week, we had to narrow down the bar talk audience from a studio audience. We just, the social distancing thing came into be where we decided, uh, I decided it's best that we kind of limit our studio audience to just myself. And operating at the controls this evening is my good friend, DJ Kevin Stew from kevinstew.com, from Kevin Stew the Night Shift. Check him out. Um, again, he's one of those brothers that you can always rely on. So right now he's there doing all the honors on the, the cameras and the, the, the other aspects of it. But like I said before, um, I'm amazed at what has been happening to folks, uh, what has been happening to us all in the last couple of weeks. In fact, um, the virus has affected all of us, whether or not we physically um, got it or we just did not get it, but we're suffering from um, the effects of it. In fact, when I think about it, I, 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 as a photographer, I'm reflecting on just a, um, just a few weeks ago. For example, we had um, a couple things like the longest yard. If talking to each other. There's another slide with him. Uh, just communicate with a, a little youngster. The youngster had a toy and he wanted to just... ...socializing. Actually, that date was the 26th of, 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 of January. Not so long ago, less than two months. In fact, we had other things. We had, um, I was so honored to be uh, when um, our minister, um, Bob Zegrange, came and we had an amazing time together with artists, with just people congregating and having a wonderful time um, just sharing and being part of this wonderful environment we call uh, South Florida. Fast forward and uh, um, a couple of weeks now, uh, yesterday in fact, I went out and I was looking, just looking around the place, see what was happening. The parks were empty. Uh, people were anywhere else but at home. The malls, everything was just, um, just, just clear. In fact, I went 
if Kevin, if you can find that slide, I went to a, a, a church um, that I'm very familiar with, and on that uh, door was a sign, and you, some of you probably recognize the, 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 the church itself. There was a sign that until further notice, um, service was um, canceled. And I couldn't believe that a single virus would create a situation where um, social gatherings are affected, um, churches were affected, and just the entire life as we know came almost to a standstill. As for me, um, I'm hit like everybody else. In fact, this weekend is the first zero dollar weekend I've had as a business person when most of my contracts with cities, with, um, with just people at events, have just been canceled. And so what do you do in events like that? You just keep moving on. Um, but I'm not alone because this is why I wanted to show this weekend. We want to talk to you about the grass root level and people who are experiencing stuff. So I do what as a photographer, whether I'm paid or not, I do. I went out in a boat and I spoke to people. And some of the people who are hit hardest, believe it or not, our own Jamaican folks here in the United States who are in some of the uh, jobs that if they don't go to work, they simply don't get paid. And it's been a fear of people. They go to work and they're not sure. In fact, I have, um, Felicia is one of the young ladies I spoke to. And I'm surprised. You'll, you'll hear what she has to say. You stay safe, not only for yourself, but for your kids, your loved ones, and, you know, basically your environment, period. Because the better, the more effort you put out to take care of yourself, it'll also be better for the, you know, outside world. Um, my experience so far, as far as my surrounding, this is pretty much the slowest my store has ever been. And um, it's definitely, you know, making a very, a really big impact, not in a good way, in a really bad way, because, you know, um, multiple stores have closed. Also, um, you know, we're getting to the point where we're gonna actually close. Who knows, today we got a message. Hopefully, you know, we can still make a few couple of bucks. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I say, um, hey everyone. Um, and this is some of the fears that I had my attention. You're going to work and you don't know whether or not you will actually be working for that day because people have gone to work and have been told there is just not enough work, there's not enough customers, you need to simply go back home. And um, it, it, it's, it's a kind of bravery that I've seen for some of our folks. They come to work, they are still there working. And in the case of like Felicia, she's a trooper. She was telling me all the things that we needed to do. And a couple of people I've spoke to who I didn't really want to get on camera because, you know, our folks are. We sometimes find it um, almost intrusive to be on camera. But nonetheless, they basically um, came in and they tell us about their fears. Uh, many of them don't have the resources. A lot of folks are from paycheck to paycheck. Um, just seeing, just taking a look at some people. Mitch McLean, um, watching with you. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Rick. Uh, DJ Kevin Stewart's in the background saying greetings. Tr uh, Tricia, I see you too. Um, thanks for joining in with us. Um, still on the subject of how um, the coronavirus has hit us all because some people figure, well, I'm taking my vitamins, I've got checked. In fact, I was coming here this evening and I would pass by the C.B. Smith Park and there are lines around from yesterday of people making sure that they're healthy. The, some of the issues we're having here is that the virus takes so long to affect people that you're not so sure if you even test today whether or not 15 days from now you're not part of the you know part of the casualty. But even if you're not physically affected, we want to talk about the people who are basically affected at the ground level. Like I said, I took the cameras out, I went out, and I spoke to some folks. 
In fact, I went into what was called the, the, the Lord Hill Mall, um, better known as Jamaica Hill. And the place on a Saturday afternoon, noon, that's normally um, packed with people from jewelry to cosmetics to clothing to anything you can think of was like a ghost town. And so I got to talk to one of the guys, when, um, uh, Stumper, I think he's called, a barber. Hale, if you're watching, man, um, his barbershop slash salon, because he had everything going on inside there, is normally one of the busiest places we could find. But instead, he, like everybody, was uh, talking about the issues that um, arise while you're uh, you're there, there's nobody coming into the store. Listen to him. Here, nothing yet. I haven't heard anything, but but to how things look, everybody's closing up early because there's no business. Gotcha. So, you know, even if the mall is not closing, if everybody close up, there is no mall. And I've already looked around in your um, um, barber shop slash salon and I've seen that there is obviously chairs empty. So talk to me, what's happening? Right now, things slow. You know what I mean? Because of this coronavirus, that's, they said that's going on right now, you know? Um, hopefully, say everything turn around and things start pick up back again. But for right now, everybody does a stay in. Nobody want to come out and spend the money. You know what I mean? I hope say this thing finish soon so we can get back to work or we usually do it. So how does it affect you and the people who work with you here because if no money coming I mean I don't know if you have a stimulus package for your workers if they don't work they get paid. <laughs> no right now it's all about savings you know so let's make sure so you save up your money and yeah, after just go through the struggle like everybody else you know what I mean and and we just are going to work until the government or the city or whatever tell us uh, a time for the spark up. Have you heard any rumors that the mall will be closed? There are several malls that have been closed, some places that have limited the hours. Is there anything going on here? Honestly, I hear nothing yet. I haven't heard anything, but but to how things look, everybody is closing up early because there is no business. Gotcha. So, you know, even if the mall is not closing, if everybody close up, there is no mall. Um, hi Cheryl, I see you. Uh, Maxine Chang Rees, I see you also. Um, uh, Claudia Case, uh, thank you for uh, joining in. Um, here's the issue. Whether that the mall is open is not the greatest problem. Um, whether or not any of the stores are open in town is not the greatest problem. The issue at hand here is that people are not coming out. People are, fe are pretty much are living in fear of just connecting with people. In fact, one of the issues we had here this evening is as a, as a social group, um, should we have had a studio audience? And it was able, that, were we able to have a 10 feet or six feet rule where people could come in and feel safe? Or would we be having a show that we are unable to to abide by some of the rules that people have set, like we talk about the social distancing. And so that's one of the reasons why we decided to, 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 to cancel the show this evening in terms of the studio audience aspect of it, and that I just simply go solo because people are literally fearful. So some of the questions I would want to ask, if someone could answer that um, it, out there, if you're watching your streaming, um, social... One of the things that I have an issue with is we talk about uh, social distancing. But what happens when you leave to go to Publix, a public place, you take a cart, so you wipe off the cart, you go down the aisle, you touch things that other people have touched. So maybe there's nobody around you. Think, think about it. There's nobody around when you, when, you, when you go for that can of ketchup, but, or ketchup, or catsup, or whatever people call it. But... How many people have touched that before? How can you guarantee? And so you come back home because you didn't go to work, but you come back home and you come with your loved ones, what precautions have you taken? And um, is it possible that you could pick up anything in, in the process? 
It, 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 is it paranoia or is it just good health conditions? I agree with the social distances even in this environment because I, I want at least from a show point of view show that we are complying with some of this stuff that have been mentioned. Uh, but how does it affect, does it create that fear? Because like the barbershop, think about it. Um, you have somebody cutting your hair or in the salon section, somebody is in your face, touching you, breathing on you, so forth. I could understand. And so even if the mall opens, like he says, there is not much he can do because of that fear of close connection. The question would be, how long are we going to be living in that fear? In the meantime, let me just look at a question. Uh, Cheryl Spence, major psychological aspects of this lockdown, isolation, confusion. Um, I throw that back out to my viewers, um, or the viewers here on Jamaicans.com. How much of that, how, how, how uh, especially as men, we are home, we can't go to work. I mean, some guys are not able to, 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 to go out on their daily work. Some have the luxury that you can stay home and you still get a paycheck. But for many guys and women, but guys in particular who are the breadwinner of the household, how do you deal with staying home from your job? You don't work, you don't get paid, but now you got wifey at home, you got the kids at home, and the demands don't cease. The landlord, the car note, everything is still in effect. Let me hear from you if you, if, if, if you can. Um, in the meantime, though, one of the things I like is that the folks that I speak to, no matter what, our people are strong folks, and therefore we have some suggestions as they have their suggestions as even in the, even in the face of being out of a job, even in the face of being contracting some of these virus, they still have a word for us. I think Felicia um, had something else to say. <laughs> Pretty how much. Many have you had to, there has been any layoffs or so forth because people have been just sent home because you don't have enough work? Yes. They have been a shortage in the work hours and it's really affecting us really bad but you know we're still taking it one day at a time because there's nothing that we can really do. But yes, there has been a shortage in the hours. I have kids at home and I've been building their immune system when they come home, clothes off, shower, shoes off at the front door, wash your hands and I just, so far everything has been okay. Um, how many Jamaicans, how many Caribbean people work here? Um, mm, give or take, probably, pretty much the whole staff. <laughs> 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 pretty how much. Many, have you had to, there has been any layoffs or so forth because people have been just sent home because you don't have enough work? Yes. They have been a shortage in the work hours and it's really affecting us really bad, but you know, we're still taking it one day at a time because... <laughs> There's nothing that we can really do. But yes, there has been a shortage in the hour. I have kids at home and I've been building their immune system. When Everyone, my name is Felicia. I work for um, the American Thrift Store and I'm a customer associate. And so far, to be honest with you, um, I know everyone is going crazy and running around, going wild, but you know, it's okay to take a minute, pause, take a deep breath and just do the best that you can to stay safe, not only for yourself, but for your kids, your loved ones, and you know, basically your environment, period. Because the better, the more effort you put out to take care of yourself, it'll also be better for the, you know, outside world. Um, my experience so far, as far as my surrounding, this is pretty much the slowest my store has ever been. And I go back to uh, one of the viewers currently, uh, Pauline uh, says, when me for come out, me for afraid because I, I have allergies. I'm afraid me might cough or <laughs> sneeze because of, and it says here more, uh, because of people look at me like I have corona. Whenever I'm going to work, I always put ginger uh, cuts up. Uh, uh, and cut sweet in my mouth, <laughs> in my mouth. Um, that in itself is something that I even worry about because back in the day, if you sneeze, somebody would say, God bless you or Gesundheit. 
Now, if you... If, <laughs> I see Kevin show him and say, Hey, listen, man. If you sneeze, people are running or people want to shoot you because there, there is such a fear. Is it fear? Is it paranoia? Because um, I, I, I laughed recently. I'm cooking in the kitchen and I'm seasoning some meat and I poured some black pepper and instantly I want to sneeze. And I'm laughing to myself because... Um, there is fact, there is fiction, and there is reality. The fact is that a cough is normal. Uh, a sneeze is normal also. Um, but you don't know what is what. So I even been to a store recently, and this lady came in with a mask. She, she had, had one of those um, masks with the two things on the side. I don't know. Some people know what it is. It's just beyond the regular ma mask. And she came in, and I'm going through the door, and she stopped long enough enough that 10 feet social distance to make sure I got to the door, up the door, and then she attempted to use her glove to open the door. We are living in that time that at, at, even at the ground level, nobody pretty much, uh, it, there's a mistrust of anybody who look like they're going to sneeze. Who look, so the question is, how do we deal with it? One of the things I like from my barber, my barber, in, in, in typical Jamaican style, Jamaicans have um, things that they, they, they claim that they use and they do that can correct stuff. If you listen to my barber at number two, he, he is armed. He has his own solution um, as to how to deal with this virus. Listen. To uh, because this is often talk, uh, um, this mall is always called a Lauder Hill, but Jamaica Hill Mall. Yeah. Uh, just how many Caribbean stores are in this mall? Um, approximately, I would say. Just a rough average. Yeah, not even say approximately. Um, I would say probably about seven to eight store, probably Caribbean store. Caribbean store. Caribbean. Okay, and how many Caribbean people is, um, and Jamaicans in particular think probably work inside this mall? Um, I don't want to have a number, but I know it's a lot. A lot. Yeah, because the barber shop, you have the hairdressing salon, you have the um, beauty supply, you know what I mean? Um, I have other stores that they work in, uh, like clothes stores and stuff like that, so, you know gotcha. what I mean? Any last words for us? Any sign of hope? Anything that we can go by as, as a small business person? All right. I would tell the people them just right now, just protect yourself and protect your family and just make sure so you follow what the, 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 um, the health um, people are saying. You know what I mean? And also, as Jamaican, make sure so you deal with the remedy. You know what I mean? White rum. You see me all these things. You know what I mean? These... um. Yeah, you get a garlic. You know the, you know the, the thing, the thing. The yeah, thing. let me have a button. Where from Jamaica are you from? I'm from Kingston, but I was born in Spanish Town, but my raised a Kingston. So you what? I mean? What's the Jamaican remedy on the road right now for coronavirus? Garlic. <laughs> That's the thing there. Garlic. Make sure you eat your garlic, bake your garlic. Yeah, you know what I mean. And drink your rum. Ria Nevia, this are the thing there, you see me? <laughs> so make sure we don't do them something there and just stay in our house and stay away from people. And right now, in Jamaica, they have a new saying it's not no hand, it's not no elbow, or your foot. <laughs> you understand? So make sure you don't use no foot, a stump apology to the world. Big up on yourself, people. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh Barbara Stumpy. <laughs> Uh, m m much respect to you, uh, Barbo. Uh, he was entertaining, but it points to the Jamaican, wh whether or not anything he says is actually uh, factual, although some people tell you garlic is a thing to use and that a little bit, well, we always know that a little bit of white rum is, is, is good for about everything. It kills everything. And so he's suggesting that uh, white rum does... Um, help him in any case and the garlic and um and he even alluded to the fact that we are now at the point where it's no longer a fist or a hell but people are putting a foot because our people are doing everything to stay far but uh it it, it all points to this psychological thing that in, in all seriousness that we 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 need to realize and we probably need to have 
an approach in your household. I'd love to hear um, from our audience uh, in Jamaican.com or anywhere you're connecting from. Actually, I didn't know, I, no one has said to me so far where they're connecting from. If you would, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but for where you, you're, how are you dealing in, when you, in your household? How are you able to, to keep things normal? That is the whole thing. We have heard a lot of things, like I said, from the politicians, and they do the thing, uh, from the, 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 the president. We have heard of notions in, in the Caribbean as to how we people are approaching it in terms of lockdown. But at the end of the day, you are in your household. How are you dealing with it? I'd love to know. Ah. Uh, someone mentioned actually, um, funny thing about money this time is that money in itself, money in your hand is one of the fastest ways of, of um, uh, contracting coronavirus because of money. So even in the mat matter of handling money, how do we deal with it? Do we just simply pick it up or do we need to carry on our gloves? Uh, in the meantime, folks, I'd love to hear from you. Where are you calling from? Where are you listening from, I should say? Just give me a word on that. Hi, Tiffany from New York. Uh, glad to have you on the show. <laughs> Someone says to me, do you realize that you don't speak in complete sentences? There are so many thoughts that's going through my mind right now, and I, I stand corrected if that's the way you feel. But there's just so much that is actually going on. Um, Cheryl points to family communication. How do you communicate in a family? when you're having this, when people leave out every day and they come back home, or now everybody's at home, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with this? Now, it's, it's, it's not that we have a whole lot of answers. I, I, I certainly don't have the answers for that, but I do know um, that just talking about this issue, especially from the ground, uh, grassroots, um, ground zero level, that we all can actually I have a chance to reflect and um, like I said as a photographer when I went out and I saw all these changes how do we integrate further on because um, by all um, words from the authorities we will be in this for quite a while so my question to you how do we um, get out of this how do we get back to normalcy and can we ever get back to normalcy in a situation like this? Uh, is, is it going to be something that we can um, cure once and for all, or do we have to live with it from time to time? Most people are pointing to the psychological thing, uh, suggesting that there is a, a, a thing at home that when, once you're at home, um, what do you do? And the good thing about it is that social media has always been blamed in my, in my mind for um, a lot of things that have gone wrong in the society. Uh, being home this time and being able to be on social media, I think is probably the best thing for people at this time because there's no other place to go. I mean, uh, DJ Kevin, what will you think? Uh, huh. A lot of people are really, really and truly stressed mm -hmm. by it, for real. Um, the practice of social distancing really does make social media uh, profitable at this point. It, someone said to me today, you know, they hope I'm doing well with my business. I'm like, that's the joy of doing online broadcasting. You're already socially distanced. I don't have guests coming into my studio. All my guests are by phone. Mm -hmm. So unless they're going to send a virus to my computer, I'm not contacting any viruses from them. Mm -hmm. The issue with the gloves and the masks, people are wearing these masks and then they're sweating and it, the mask is, is, is coming out of place and they're, putting, they're still using these same hands to adjust the mask. Hence, putting stuff, at their, putting their hands at their faces. In addition to that, 
they're touching everything with these gloves. Okay, so you're not getting your hands dirty, but you are transferring whatever you touch with these gloves from point A to point B and over and over and over again. And yes, you're wearing the gloves, but then you go and touch your clothes with the gloves. Then you mm -hmm. go and handle the money with the gloves. The same gloves, you're not changing the gloves. Those that are mindful enough to change the gloves, they don't know how to change the gloves. Because you're taught how to change gloves properly when you do things like CPR first aid. There's a technique to changing the gloves. The majority of the public don't know this. So yeah, they're wearing gloves, all good and well. For what? Do they know what they're doing with the gloves? You better have work going with your hands and washing your hands regularly. And Pauline seems to agree with you. She says, I see people wearing masks, but I think it's not healthy. I think it's not healthy for them. Sometimes the masks are dirty. Even the gloves are dirty. And then touch up food in the supermarket and don't know how even to change a dirty glove. Exactly. So um, the irony of it then at the ground level is that we, we need to watch how we... We, we attempt to protect ourselves because basically we're saying that if you, Paul is suggesting it makes makes sense to me that if you're wearing a glove, um, and you said it yourself, uh, uh, Kevin, that there are techniques which I probably need to learn myself as to how to remove a glove and how not to make whatever residue from that glove affect people in the supermarket and affect people at the gas pump and affect people at so many different places. So there's a lot to think about when we do this kind of thing. I just want to close out this evening by going back to my um, barber uh, and how he thinks about cu cured things. I think it's rather funny that he uh, alludes to that. And um, let me see if there's any uh, points that we need to, we're missing here. Um, somebody has suggested again, constantly washing your hands, cleaning all surfaces, cleaning front door knobs, and she's Pauline McLean from Canada. Uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, Tiffany suggested this will be for a while. It will get under control, but will pop up back up again. We will develop an immune uh, our immunity to it. Uh, Cheryl, um, family is communicating virtually. My sister in New York, my son, my niece, and I had a virtual dance off on Friday. <laughs> so, um, I, I thanks for that, Cheryl, because again. We have to be resilient people. We have to find ways and means of uh, ensuring that we survive this. And one of the ways of survive this is finding creative things. It's a dance off virtually. I, I, I like that. Um, Pauline uh, Doyle says, I'm in the U.S. for eight years and I've never catch a cold or flu. Whenever, flu time, whenever there's flu time uh, near, I, I blend garlic. Onion, I'm trying to find more of this. She says I blend garlic, onion, apple, apple cider, uh, cider vinegar with vinegar and it surely work. I don't take medication because whenever you take medication for an ailment, it damages some other organ and from the one to the other. In other words, um, Sometimes we have to watch out for these things. So there are home medicines, and so again, we hear that garlic is coming up a lot. Um, and I guess we just have to bear in mind that this, these are stuff that, I don't know if there's any proven remedy for it, but if it works for you, uh, washing your hands, just doing everything that is necessary. Uh, it is my prayer and, uh, that we survive this, that we survive it and we come out learning some lessons from it. If I could close out with anything else, I'd close out with a thought that, you know, um, this is an awakening for us. We are uh, folks that have been, uh, take certain things for granted. We take going to the park, we take going to um, the, the supermarket, going to the laundromat, 
going to the movies, um, having fellowship. In fact, my studio here has been um, open to you name it. We have had Holy Child, we would have Glenn Muir, we have had um, so many other um, schools here. We have had the CG, we have had so many events in this small studio, and we take that for granted that life is, it is what it is. If we can benefit anything from the coronavirus is to know that we need to be grateful every day uh, for our existence and that everything in life is not guaranteed. So for each day that we wake up and we can have a good day, a wonderful day, then it's a day for us all to rejoice and feel good. Um, until next week with another topic, I don't know what the topic will be based on what's happening. Um, we will be back at 5 uh, p.m. for Bar Talk. Maybe next week when everything is well, we can have the guys here and the ladies as usual to give us a fact check or a reality check. Uh, but for now, this is Luke Ballantyne coming to you from Moment to Remember Studios. I have in Sunrise here, I have on the mixer and everything else this evening is none other than my friend uh, DJ Kevin Stew from Kevin Stew. Uh, dot com and Kevin Stewart the Night Shift. Uh, another brother who deals with topical issues and someone you need to check out whenever you have a chance. But this is Luke Ballantyne. Um, like I said, this was an abridged version of um, Bar Talk. Uh, we try to keep as much people away so that we can at least be in line with what the officials have said. And so we just thank you.